Hello, and welcome back to Russ Plays Games. My name is Russ, and as you can see, I'm sitting in front of my paint station. Now, I wanted to kind of highlight a piece of equipment that I use a lot. Um, this is called an op light. In fact, when you saw um, my uh, phone, this was what it was. It was up here in this. Um, and it has a magnifying glass. This was my ex-wife's idea. She... Um, she saw me painting, and I was like literally like hunched over, like trying to see, you know. And when I have incredibly small detail, like for instance, this is from the Sword and Sorcery in Ancient Chronicles, you know, when you have something like this, okay, um, you have really fine detail that you have to kind of get into, and and you know you have to try to you know do that, and so. Instead of, you know, sitting there all hunched over trying to be like this, I can pull that down and I can actually use it. Um, so, I wanted to um, start today by kind of highlighting where there are deficiencies within the base coat. So, if you can kind of see, there's, it might be a little bit difficult. Let me turn this off for one second. <clears throat> you can kind of see where um, I'm trying to see if I can focus this on the miniature but it doesn't seem to want to focus but basically you can kind of see where there's some areas where his um, his uh, features are a little bit you know like there's some areas where um, he didn't quite get all covered okay and um, same thing with uh, Judas over here. There's like a big area right behind his sword, and I know it's kind of hard to see from this angle, but basically, yeah, you can kind of see it in there. Okay. You're going to find that when you go around um, and look at the figure after you get done base coating it. Um, I know that I know that it cut off kind of like right at the end as I was just trying to finish because I was trying to get it done as quickly as possible. Um, so the, the biggest thing that, that you want to do, and then his cloak has kind of a big area down here at the bottom, um, that needs to get redone, and there's a big area across the top here that I didn't get. So I'm going to clean those up very quickly. And, um, and then what we're, what we're going to try to focus on today, let me move that down just a tiny bit there. That way you can kind of see my hands. What we're going to focus on today is doing the... Uh, um, is trying to get the models based, okay? And what that means is we're gonna try to get the base colors put on them, okay? So what I'm gonna do really fast is I'm going to take a brush like this, okay? You can see it's been kind of used. <clears throat> You're gonna soak it down, get it nice and good, okay? And like I said before, you're always going to want to have some some paper towels handy. Um, and what you're what you're going to want to do when you're cleaning up a base coat like this, you don't need a lot. You just want a teensy weensy little drop. Come on. There we go. Because um, we don't need a whole bunch, we just want enough to um, to get to get back underneath and get those areas that weren't done. And then we're going to let them dry for a minute or two and we will um, and then we will start with the layers. Now, one of the things that's really important when you're when you're looking at different styles of miniatures and this is something that I think I'm probably going to do a video on here pretty quick. Um, I think it's necessary. Um, but, like, with the Warlord um, game that I'm trying to play, I, I think it's probably the, the best undiscovered miniatures game ever made. I'm not kidding you. Okay? So what I'm going to do here is, um, let me finish just kind of base coating these guys a little bit. Um, sometimes your paint runs a little thin, 
you just want to kind of get the most of it. You don't need to get every single little point, but you want to make sure that you're, again, stabbing down in, like his chain mail. Like there's a big area right up under his, um, right up under there. You can kind of see the silver right there. Okay, you want to make sure you get that area because that is important. That's the back side of his um, of his tabard um, back here. Okay, this is the back side of this. So you want it to be done because you don't want to have it um, become. Um, you you don't want it to show through because it will and it, it will look hideous, okay? So the biggest thing we're going to do, you can probably hear, I was playing on a different computer, I was playing a little Diablo, because I've been playing Diablo 3 on my PlayStation 3, so I wanted to go back and play some original Diablo. So, now well, it's just kind of doing it. <laughs> it's fun, it probably shouldn't come up too much. Um, so basically, when you have when you have it all done like that, okay, and we'll wash off our brush. <clears throat> now, let's let's look at our main man, Judas Bloodspire. Okay, so a big question would be, what colors would you want, and how would you want it to look? Well. He's a vampire, so we probably want to do something kind of pale for his flesh. So what I would end up recommending is, I usually use some kind of like a peach color like this for the flesh. But because he's undead, his flesh is going to be a lot more pale, okay? Because our, you know, for us white folks, uh, Caucasian folks, we have kind of peachy skin, right? That's because we have blood running underneath it. Because the vampires are undead, they need blood to survive, okay? They have a very pallid um, color. So one thing you could do is use like a white or even like this linen color, which I've used a few times um, for different... Um, for different undead things, like for instance, um, I actually highlighted this guy, um, his bones and, you know, his, you know, just basically his bones were highlighted with the linen color because I put on the Agarax earth shade, which darkened it down, and then I used the linen to kind of go back and highlight individual bones. So one of the things that you can definitely do with that is you can because I, I just did a straight white like this and then after I've colored it after I've toned it down a little bit then I go back with that linen and kind of and kind of color it in so it gives it that kind of undead aged look now him being a vampire we probably want his flesh to look you know somewhat different so the main colors you want to get on because you can be a little bit, um, you know, a little bit messy with them because you can go back and neaten up later. So one of the things that you really want to take a look at is how do I want this character to look? So for me, I think if we're going for sort of a vampirish, vampire look, I'm going to take this apple barrel white. I'm going to give it a good shake. Okay, and then I'm going to pour some into this little palette here, a couple drops. I'm going for this brush. This is a 10-0 um, brush. It has a nice tip. The only problem that I have with this one is the tip is very, very, um, is very long. So when I try to go in and do things, it's like I have to really kind of, you know, touch it kind of at a distance. And, of course, the tip is a little bit bent, as you can kind of see there. Um, it's, it's a little bit bent down 
it's kind of hard to see, but basically, yeah, and it, it's a little bit bent. And one way to deal with that is if you're going for highlighting, use the back side of the bend. Just dip it in, use the back side just to kind of line, okay? If you're going for a point, like you're going to push, then you can use the curve. So if the curve goes like this, okay, you can you can dip it this way and use it to highlight, if that makes sense. So you can you can use the back of it to kind of go like that, to give you a nice line, okay? And then if you need to stab, you can just point and then you can stab, okay? Either way. So what we're gonna do here is, We've got Judas Bloodspire, and we're going to get his face, okay? Now, this is a very thin paint. Apple Barrel is a very, very thin paint, so we might need to use a couple of coats for this, okay? And it's going to look very, very ghostly white, but once once we put um, a good... Um, once we put a good shade on him, then you're going to find that... Um, that he uh, that that his skin will tone right down, okay. And it's going to look a little strange when you first do it because you're going to be like, "Oh my gosh, that doesn't look like him at all. What am I doing?" <clears throat> so his face is going to look something like that, okay. Now, <clears throat> um. If you have any other parts that you want to be white, this is the time to do it because your paint's on your palette. It's already wet. Um, I don't, at the moment, I don't really have anything else that I that I can see will be white. And if I if I need something a little bit later, I might do it. So now, if we look at the miniature kind of close up, okay, he's got a big sword. He's got some gloves. He's got um, you know kind of a tabard in the back. And um, he's got some some mail on his knee up here in the front, and he's got some uh, he's got some different stuff on his chest. Okay, so what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna want to figure out what colors do we want to put this guy on. Well, in Warlord, one of the main colors actually I know what we could paint. There's all these skulls on his base. I don't know what we could paint. I think. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, why don't we? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this point and then just get a teensy weensy bit of paint. Okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it across the base. Okay, very lightly, just kind of drag it across the base. What we're trying to do here is we are trying to find all of the different um, skulls that he's standing on. That time he was standing on skull. Um, but we're just going to try to hit a little bit of that around there. Because once we actually go in and um, put some of that um, stuff on, and if it... It seems like too much on your on your brush, then use your paper to kind of wipe it off a little bit. And we're gonna kind of come back in here. And we're just gonna try to get some of this. My tip is already starting to kind of go, no, I don't like you. I don't like you. You're not being smart. I don't want you. You can kind of dry brush it a little bit. I'll go over dry brushing um, in the next video because that that one's gonna be that one's gonna take a few minutes because it's gonna I'm gonna have to explain it fairly fairly easily. It, it's not something that I can just you know say oh do it this way. It's it's something that you it's it's technique that you kind of have to learn. And these are again these are techniques that um, a guy when when I was um, a lot younger than I am now, <laughs> I was I was probably about twenty years ago now. Um, there was a guy who uh, was working at a place called Uncle's Puzzles, Games, and More, 
in our local mall. And it was, uh, you know, it had, they had games from like Warhammer on down. And I actually painted a Reaper miniature. It was the first miniature I ever painted. And this guy showed me how. He showed me the dry brushing techniques. He showed me how to base coat. He showed me all that stuff. And so I've kind of taken some of what he's taught me and kind of mixed it with some of the techniques that I've seen from other people. As I've gotten better with my techniques, that's how I, I start to do that. So now, one of the things that is um, a main color is red. Okay, That's kind of a vampire's main color. This is a metallic paint, okay? So there's there's literally little tiny um, shards, flecks of metal in this in this paint, okay? It's almost like a glitter paint, but it's little tiny shards of metal suspended in the acrylic paint, okay? What I like about this kind of paint is it has a real rich red. If you see, you can kind of see this red right here that's the red that this is okay so just like before because i had actually um done that for this guy's little um thing right up here okay and i think i did it for yeah i did it for this guy too um for some of his uh, armor these are from the uh, D, D fantasy adventure board game um, by parker for um, in Europe, um, it was it was a game that came out back in 2000, and it was kind of Wizards' answer to like the Dragon Strike Hero Quest craze that people had. So you can see I put a little dollop of this paint on there. So we're gonna take our brush, and in and in actuality we can actually use the next side is up. We can actually use this brush. So I'll kind of show you how you can do things with a little bit bigger brush. Okay, so we're going to wet it down. You want to wet it down. And sometimes what I like to do is I'll come down here and just kind of lightly touch it on my on my pants. Because what that does is it just kind of wicks away some of the water out of it. Okay, you don't want the brush to be too wet. Because if it's too wet, then your paint is going to be super, super thin. Okay, so what we're going to do... I'm going to take this, we're going to dab it so that we have just a little bit of paint on the end like that, okay? So you can kind of see that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come up here to his armor because he has these nice uh, shoulder pauldrons up here. And we're going to color it red. Now, what's your probably going to find is is that with this kind of paint it is super super thin okay so you can kind of see there's a lot of black showing through okay so what we're going to end up doing just like duncan Rhodes, we're going to use two thin coats but these thin coats are going to be a little bit different because um we're not actually adding any water to these because they're already super super thin okay so you want to make sure that you get in all the little nooks and crannies okay that's important I mentioned that before in my previous video that you need to have this stuff hit the nooks and crannies okay you want to make sure that all of your paint is going where you want it to go okay and you can be a little messy you can uh, you can um, put paint in where you think the paint should be. And who's going to tell you wrong? Certainly not me. Um, what I might also do, because, see, this is, this is the thing. This particular um, faction of Warlord, the Necropolis, they have um, a very different view of, like, the, the world of Taltos and, and um, the various factions of Taltos, where they kind of see themselves as, um, 
they kind of see themselves as being like more than um than the normal people the the you know they because they're vampires right um and they have undead armies and skeletons and various things like that it's one of the other reasons why i was painting up some of these figures was i find what hell i might even be able to use some of these in my in my uh thing so <clears throat> Another thing that you need to note is right down in here, okay, he's got a cod piece, and he's got, well, it's it's basically just a skirt. It's it's It, it protects the groin area. And then he's got right hip here on his knee, he has, um, uh, he has a, a knee cap armor piece, and then he's got the greaves, um, and the boots. So <clears throat> we're going to get right down in here. And we're going to color up all of that. And I'll show you here in a minute what we're coloring. Because some of this, we might end up coloring a different color. Just because it adds a little bit to the drama. Okay? But we can put an initial layer and at least just have it covered. So we know what we're painting. Okay? Because... This is important. Now, one of the things to note, you see how um, it might be a little bit difficult here. Let me pop that down. So <clears throat> if you see his, um, where I'm coloring the cod piece there, okay, right up here, you want to pull down because there's a separation in the plates, okay? So there's... There's a plate, and then there's a plate. And so when you pull down across, you're going to go down over the first plate, down onto the second plate, and then there's going to be a little bit of dark. There's going to be that artificial darkness that I was talking about right up underneath like this. Okay, So that's important. That is something that you need to have when you do this. Okay, You want to make sure that you're always going kind of against the grain. So for instance, on his knee pad up here, okay, it has a center, it has a center pad, which I'll color really quick so that you can kind of see it. And then from that center pad, there is a part that goes down and there's a part that goes up. So for the part that goes up, we're going to turn the figure around and we're going to pull towards okay and i'll show you what that looks like here in a second i know it's kind of hard to see on the video but you can kind of see you can actually kind of see what i'm doing okay and then we're going to pull down like this okay we're going to pull down now sometimes we might have to pull to the side because we might not be able to get the brush in there but basically what that does is that you can kind of see that it, it gives that artificial darkness, okay? Because we're pulling against the grain, okay? And then if your brush, like mine, starts to lose its tip a little bit, get the paint off, okay? You're gonna clean the ferrule, that's this metal part, okay? And you're gonna pull it into a tip. You want that tip, okay? You always want the tip, just the tip. Anybody who knows that reference, put it down in the comments. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing. Okay, we're going to grab some paint. We're going to come back in here. We're going to start from the from the knee pad and we're going to pull down. Okay, start from the knee pad and we're going to pull down. And again, we can be a little messy at this stage. So you can kind of see I've got a little bit on his tabard and all that kind of stuff. It's fine. Because we're going to come back to that later on, okay? Now, one of the things that you need to note is sometimes these parts are separated by a join, okay? It's not a mold line, it's an actual join line because it's actually a part of the armor. So the armor piece actually connects front, back, and so there's a small gap that's in there, and you're going to want to make sure that you paint up to the gap, but not inside the gap. That makes sense? Because if you, if you paint inside the gap, 
what's going to happen? Our buddy here is going to end up with what? No artificial shadows. And it's going to look unnatural. Okay? Now, sometimes you can get that back if you have a red shade. I don't have a real red shade. I just use Seraphim Sepia, okay, which is kind of a brownish red. And that's what I mostly use for things like armor and gold and that kind of stuff. I use that because it's that it's more of that type of um, paint. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, let me click here. I'm going to paint this guy. And then I think we're going to move on to our friend Sir Justin the Green. Okay. We'll come back to our buddy. Um, actually, before we do that, hang on. Let me um, get. All right, I think that's good for now. Um, all right, let me go ahead and come back up. So now that. And, and the funny thing is, is that the first coat, because this is acrylic paint, it dries very, very fast. Oh, I need to get those on the back. Um, see, that's why, you, that's why you turn the miniature around, because. You'll find things like he's got a big old plate. He's got a bunch of plate on his back. And he's got a big plate right here. And again, we don't have to necessarily color these because they're going to be hidden by the cloak. But if somebody goes and picks up the miniature to look at it and they can see, you know, they're kind of turning it around and going all around, they could see that and they could be like, hey, you didn't color the back. Like, well, I'm sorry. I, I didn't think anybody would care. Um, and as I've said before, there is a lot of detail on these miniatures. I'm surprised at these Bones miniatures. There is so much detail. I'm going to leave um, these two sort of plates on his back open because I think I'm going to color those a different color, just for the hell of it. It'll probably end up being like a gold color just because, you know, it'll look good with the red. Um, now, I'm going to get that plate right there. One of the things you want to make sure that you do when you do this kind of stuff is you want to make sure that you, uh, and I know I said I shouldn't be hunching down, but I am. Um, one of the things that you want to make sure that you're doing when you're doing these colors, um, and there's also some plates up underneath his um, shoulder pauldron there. So he's got like he's got like a pauldron and then he's got like a secondary plate and then another plate below, below it. We'll color the bottom plate red and we'll color the mid plate gold, if that makes sense. So what I'm gonna do is really quick send him down, get this sucker clean. <clears throat> now there's no such thing as mistakes. They are happy accidents, just like with our buddy Bob Ross. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to color that one red. And I'll probably have to go back and color these again. But basically, what we want to make sure that we're doing is covering... Covering, and we want to make sure that the black is hidden behind the color itself, okay? Because if we have too much black showing through, then it's going to look artificial, if that makes sense. Okay, it's going to look like somebody painted black underneath and then threw, slapped a coat of paint on it and called it good. We don't want that. We want them to look good. We want them to look decent. So you're going to spend some time, okay, go in, make these plates look really, really good. Because the quality of your paint job reflects on you, okay? So if you have a shoddy paint job on the table, then people are going to look at you and go, why didn't you just paint this this way? Or... Why didn't you use this technique? Okay, so we want to make sure that we're painting and that we're getting things in there. And again, 
with this step, we don't have to be super, super precise, okay? Because we're going to end up covering it up anyway later. Now, a lot of people might say, oh my gosh, she's got metallic paints. All of his paints are going to look metallic now. No, they don't, okay? Um, I know that I know that like Duncan Rhodes kind of, you know, mentioned a lot, you know, that once you use some metallic paints, you're going to, uh, you know, you're going to, you're going to end up going to a different, you know, thing. Um, so what's going to happen is there's going to be, um, some interrupts in the video because what I'm doing is, is I'm like stopping and then picking back up, okay? Um, because this thing only goes for like 35 minutes, and then it decides I'm done. So there's going to be an interruption here in a few minutes, and that's fine. We're going to deal with it. We're going to move right along, okay? So we're just going to get this done, and then I will move on to our buddy, Sir Justin Green. All right, so for Sir Justin the Green, what we're going to do, because he is a green knight, okay, I have this emerald green folk art paint, okay, that's going to be his armor color, and I have this really bright green, actually I have a couple of different bright greens, so I've got this holly branch, and I have this um cabalite green that are pretty good paints now another one that i could use if i wanted kind of a deeper shade at first and then i wanted to highlight i could use this green the caliban green um nothing happened on caliban i'm a dark angels player by the way um for the lion and the emperor okay so basically how we're going to look at this is we're going to kind of look at this from the standpoint of how do we want this guy to look, okay? Well, I'm going to want his armor to stand out, okay? So his, um, his bracers here, okay, for the hand on both sides are going to get done, okay? And then right up here, right up next to the spear, his faceplate which has some holes and the visor, okay? And then right down here, the same kind of knee joint that we saw on him. Now, he's a little bit smaller, so the details are gonna be a little bit harder to see. Next, what I'm gonna do is, he's wearing an actual, like a tunic, okay? So what I might do is I might start with that dark Caliban green, color that whole entire thing because it goes all the way around okay so it goes all the way across his back it's on his sleeves and it's up in here okay and then I'm probably going to use a brighter green on this one and on the flag okay and I also have this uh, foliage color which is kind of a, a brighter green that we can use to kind of highlight some different things and I'll probably color the dragon um, green with like some gold highlights. Like I'll probably put some gold across the front of the dragon and, you know, I might see if I can try to maybe color the eyebrows or something like that. We'll see what happens. But that's kind of the color scheme that I'm going for. So first things first, because we're doing the armor, I can give the paint a really good shake. Okay, because I haven't used this in a while. <laughs> and we're going to drop... A little bit of that. Um, okay, so here's what's going to happen. I'm going to stop for a second, and then I'll come right back, and I will um, start with the next technique, okay? So, hang on. I'll see you in just a second. Hello, and we're back. So, basically, what I'm going to do here is, how I'm going to do this, is... I'm going to kind of spread this out just a tiny bit because I don't want to have too much on there. Okay. Because I'm going to start at the top of his helmet. 
So I'm going to start up here. And I'm going to kind of get right on in there. And again, doesn't have to be perfect, but what you're looking to do is not get anything down inside the visor. Okay? And you're trying to get some of the paint off the brush so that you can come down here and you're going to drag across. Okay? And the reason why I'm doing that is so we don't get the holes. Okay? Because we don't want the holes to be plugged with paint. So that you still get that artificial look of the shadow in the uh, in the in the guy. And then you're gonna come over here, you can go in, and come down, and you're gonna kind of get some of this paint off, actually. So I have enough of it off. And go back up, grab and pull. Well, it's hard to see because it's behind the thing, but basically what we're doing, all we're doing is we're just getting that paint all the way back in there. Okay? So that when you get done, it looks like that. You're looking for those holes, okay, in the visor. You don't want to get any of the paint down into the visor or in those little holes where he would be breathing out of, okay? And so we're going to just kind of, that's good for that. I need that on because I need to make sure I'm getting just right in that community. So now I'm going to come back down here to his knee. And I'm going to recolor his kneecap. And then I'm going to pull down again. And I'm going to continue pulling down because his boot is completely 100% um, uh, metal. So you're going to use the same technique that we used on all of the other metal parts that are um, done. So if you've ever seen, like, if you remember in Lord of the Rings when the Witch King, um, when when the when the race are stepping down in Fellowship of the Ring, that's what this looks like. Okay, his foot has a lot of those little plates on it. What you're going to do, you just grab a tiny bit of paint, okay? You don't want a lot. And just like we did with Judas, we're going to grab and pull, okay? We're just going to grab and pull. Because we're going to get that nice artificial... darkness that we're looking for, okay? Now... Again, we're going to be using a tiny bit of the um, uh, we're going to use some shade later on, okay? But what we're looking for right now is a really good just base color, okay? Now, Underneath, it's kind of hard to see. I'll try to point to it. But right there, okay, you can kind of see some of the metals, some of the paints worn off. But right in there is a foot, okay? It's really hard to see. So we're going to come back in and we're going to do the same technique. We're just going to pull, grab and pull, okay? Um, just a bit of this off. Okay, we just want the paint. We don't necessarily want all of the uh, kind of. Okay. Because it's kind of being a little bit of a punk. One of the things that I'm going to do, this is going to look a little weird. I'm going to try cover this so it looks good. That looks good. Yeah, that'll work. I'll touch it up later once I get to the thing. But basically, 
what we're looking to do here is we just want to have this be like we did with Judas, okay? We want this to be kind of the same thing. And I'm going to go back to Judas here in a minute because before the paint dries up, I kind of want to show you um, what his uh, thing is going to look like. Now, with the hand, okay, actually I'll show you up here on this hand, you're just going to drag across the fingers, okay? Just going to drag across the fingers, just like that. Okay, and what that's going to do, that is going to give us the individual fingers without it looking mangled, if you know what I mean. Um, so we're looking for, again, we're looking for that artificial shadow. This is what many painters call the artificial shadow, okay? At least I do. Um, some other mini painters might call it a bit different, but... I call it the artificial shadow because I'm just dragging across and I'm just making that look like the hand and the fingers are separate from the the haft of the weapon and that the fingers look individual and not just not just a mass. It it's not just a shapeless mass. It's you can actually see definition in the fingers. Okay? So then we're going to color right in there. Again, we're going to pull down. Okay. And then for those fingers, we're just going to do the same thing. Just going to pull down. Now, when you're doing, when you have a small area, so right up at the top of our figure, okay, our guy, Sir Justin the Green here, is grabbing on to the hilt of his sword like this, okay? And so there's not a lot of space between where the pommel of the sword is sitting and where his thumb is and his top of his finger. So, we grab the smaller brush, we're going to, again, pull, pull the paint back so that we have um, a nice tip, okay? Turn this back on so I can see. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come back here and we're going to pull forward. Because of the plate mail, okay, his fingers are, have a joint on them as well, okay? And so what we're looking for is we are looking for the individual thumb. Okay, and I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. Basically, when we get done, and I might color his uh, the the trim a bit of a different color, but that will come later. Okay. Biggest thing I want to do right now is just kind of get the color on him. Okay. That's all we're looking for. This is the base layer. Okay, this is the layer that's going to set the stage for the rest of this miniature. Basing takes time. Okay, when you're when you're when you're doing this base coat, it takes time. Okay? But it's time well spent because if you don't do it, it's going to look like crap. Okay? So we want it to look good and we want it to look awesome, okay? So let me turn this off and let me show you. Right up here, okay, <clears throat> right up here on his thumb, okay, right there where the brush is. I know it's kind of hard to see because it's a little blurry, but right there you can kind of see that he has some joints in his armors, in his fingers, okay? Now, what I initially thought was a mold line is actually where the plate comes down, separates, and then goes into another plate and then separates and goes down. So as he's holding on, because he has he has another joint that goes like this and then comes down like this. Okay? And again, we want separation between this plate and this plate. 
okay? If we don't have that separation, he doesn't look good, okay? And if he doesn't look good, guess what? You're SOL, okay? You are, because he's going to look like crap, and you don't want that. You want him to look good, okay? We want him to look really, really good. Now, if we need to, say, tidy up an area because, you know, the oils of your fingers have taken off the paint, then what we're going to do, we're going to come back to the black, okay? And we can do this. It's not that big of a deal, okay? Sometimes I do it with the, with the cap. I'll show you here in a minute. But uh, we're just going to drip a little bit of it in there. Put it back in so that it doesn't go everywhere. And actually, I'm going to take this brush. This is another, I, I showed this off, um, I think in the second video. This is another 10-0. This is usually what I use. But this brush is really, really bad. It is not good at all. So I don't use it for a whole lot. So then what we're going to do is we're going to come in here like this. We're going to grab some black on the brush. And then we're going to just base coat the miniature one last time. Okay. And you're probably going to find that with the metal miniatures in particular, okay, it's going to happen a lot. So just go in, get where you need. Okay, you need to tidy up the base, tidy up the base. Okay, but you don't need to get every single little piece of it done. Just get what you need and move on. Okay, doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't have to look perfect right now because honestly, we are you know we're still basing colors. Now, I don't do their actual bases until the end, okay? The only reason that I was doing this part first is because I already had the white out because of his face, okay? And that's the only reason. You'll notice that I haven't done anything else to either of the bases because you're not going to do the base until you finish the miniature. It's going to be the last step that you do, okay? So, I'm actually going to do something here um, that I'm, I'm, I'm kind of wanting to do with this guy. So I'm going to pull this kind of, there we go. I'm going to break the seal on the, <laughs> on that stuff. All right. So this guy's sword, he has, he has a pommel up here, well he has a hilt up here, okay, that we're going to color red in metallic, okay, and he's got a skull on on the face of it, right there, and he's got a skull on the pommel. Now, I don't think the back side, well the back side does have a skull too, okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to take a little bit of this paint, and we're going to color the pommel. We're going to color the hilt, because we already have it out, we already have it working, so we're just going to work the paint around, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but try to keep it as neat as possible. Okay. And I'm going to color that skull a different color. So it's going to be um, red. But we do want to try to get the hilt. The whole hilt and nothing but the hilt. Okay. Try not to get the blade if you can, because we're going to color the blade a different color. Okay. Now, normal can, you know, normal contention says, if you're using steel, right, it's going to be steel color, which I have the lead belcher color, works just fine, usually, no biggie. But, I'm going to do something a little different. 
I'm going to color this a different color. I'm going to color the blade totally different color, and it's going to look awesome. So I've been thinking about this as I as I was kind of like, this is one of the things that as a miniature painter, okay, when you enter into this world of painting miniatures, just like with Bob Ross, these are your miniatures. This is your world. You make it how you want it to look. If you want it to be a different color, if you don't want the blade to be just a normal steel color, don't paint it steel. Paint it a totally different color. So. Now we got that done. Here's what we are going with the deeper. What's next on you, buddy? This is one of the things that I struggle with sometimes. Is what do I paint next? <laughs> um, I'm gonna go ahead and take some of this green since I've got it here, and I'm going to color his little. Um, elbow pads. I guess you can call them. I'm going to color those green. Because why not? So I might not finish the basing in this first video, but I'll give you enough of the techniques that you'll probably be able to just go ahead and do it. Because the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to um, doing the base colors um, for Sir Justin over there. Um, and then I'll get this, and then what I'll do is I'll paint up the rest of this, and then when I come back for the next part, part four, um, I will have done the thing. Now, I think I'm going to do this. Take this and paint it right across that. Okay, um, so here's what happens if you if you tend to get paint in some place you don't want it, immediately wipe off the brush. Go right back in before it dries and just grab that excess paint you'll find that you will be able to keep the shadow. And then you just rinse and repeat. Okay. So, I uh, got about I uh, got about 15 minutes. So, I'm going to set Judas off to the side. We're going to take our Caliban Green. Okay. I'm going to pop it up. Now, uh, some of these Citadel paints, they have this cool little tab on the back. Sometimes you can get that tab to snap into place, and the lid will stay up because you can see the paint. And this is where we're going to grab the paint from. Okay. And I'll show you how I do this. Okay. I'm actually going to use the bigger brush. So we're going to just take a little bit of the paint on the end like that. Okay, we're going to come in here, and we're just going to start right in, and it's going to look dark. It is really, it is going to look like you haven't put anything on him, okay, at, at points. You are going to look at it, you're going to say, oh my god, that is so freaking dark, what the hell am I doing, but just go with it, okay. Because it'll get a hell of a lot lighter a lot quicker, let me tell you. Okay. Because what we're doing is this is going to be the base layer. Okay. This is a base paint, and I'm not sure if Caliban Green is still available, but any really dark green, kind of a foresty, really dark, earthy green will work. Okay. 
and we're going to paint all of him. Now, leave the insides of his sleeves, you're going to leave those black, okay? Because what we're doing, again, pushing that artificial shadow, okay? Now, I'm not going to paint the streamers coming out of the back of his head, okay? That's going to stay right where it is. And I just took off the layer on that dragon. Um, and don't worry if you get a little bit of paint on, um, on his belt or, you know, if you're painting a miniature like this and you get some on his belt, don't worry about it. Okay, um, so basically all we're concerned with is getting this color on the miniature. Okay, that's it. You can probably hear that my computer over there is doing its little thing with the screensaver again. Okay, and what we're trying to do here is we're we're creating. We're using dark to show light, okay? Because there's a lot of really cool folds and the hem of his cloak and that kind of stuff we can use to show shadow or to show light compared to this one, okay? So what we're going to do is we can get this all in there. Now, remember when I said that you were going to... Um, go in and paint the underside of his tabard way back in there. Well, there's a reason for that. Because we're actually going to color that with the Caliban green. Okay. And again, all that's doing is it is showing an artificial darkness. Now, you don't have to do the whole section. Like, you don't have to do right up to here. Okay, it's kind of hard to see, but you don't have to do right up to this point. Okay, I'm I'm more concerned with way back by his feet, because when he stands like this, you're going to see that part. You're not going to see this part too much, and that part can stay black, because then it'll look like his leg has disappeared underneath. It'll look like a false shadow. But you want to get straight back and then kind of come around to about halfway and then stop. Okay? So that's all we're going to do for that one. Okay? Um, and so we're just going to kind of get that. And you want to make sure that this color is on there pretty thick. Okay? Not so thick that it's going to. Um, that's going to ruin the detail on the miniature, but you want to make sure that it's pretty thick. Okay. So now that we're done with that color, put the lid back on, set that off to the side, and we're going to... Now, sometimes you'll get this kind of a thing where you get that little bit of a green. Just go back in. Really work the water into that brush. Now, the thing is, Sometimes you'll get a little stain. No big deal. It's not going to affect your other colors. Okay. So now the next coat that I want to get on there, actually, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go ahead and get the dragon on his head. Because we haven't gotten that yet. Now, with the dragon with his wings and stuff like that, you don't necessarily have to get every little thing, okay? Now, there's also a little braid that runs around um, Sir Justin's head, uh, his helmet, that separates um, this from the... separates. There's a little tiny braid right there, okay? You can kind of see it. It's right there. Okay, you want to try to avoid that at all costs, okay? And the reason for that is, once again, we're going to color that a different color, okay? 
And we want to make sure that when we're getting the dragon head, that we're hitting, that we're getting all of the little bits and pieces of the dragon. Okay? Because what we're going to end up doing here is we're going to create sort of a little green dragon. And if you ever read Dragons of Spring Dawning by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman, probably some of the best um, fantasy fiction out there, okay? I'll have to color the bottom of the dragon either. You can leave that one blank just to kind of give it that artificial shadow, okay? What we're going to do here is we're just going to kind of color this guy up okay, as best we can. We're going to make sure that we keep that nice solid metallic green color going all the way around the dragon. Okay? We want to make sure we get his head too. Because the problem is you don't get the head and you're going to miss out. Okay. And so... Basically, how this is going to work is when when we um, when we get to the shading stage, okay, we're we're going to basically be making a classic green green dragon, and then the the front of his belly, right up, sorry, right up here, the front of his belly, we're actually going to use that, okay, we're actually going to color that gold. In, in an actual gold color, okay? And we'll probably end up doing the braid in a similar color. Okay. So you want to make sure that you're getting all around the dragon, but not on that belly, okay? And you want to make sure that you get in all the little nooks and crannies. Here again, we're getting in the nooks and crannies, okay? And you don't have to color the whole thing. Like, you don't have to get underneath the head. You don't have to do all that stuff, okay? This is just the base coat, all right? So, now that we've got that done, okay, all right, now that we've got that done, okay, we're going to go back and we're going to color these streamers on the back and we're going to color this, um, this banner of his, okay, and I'm going to use this Cabalite Green. It's a very, very nice uh, neutral green color because we can also use some other ones to highlight with later, but... We're going to come up here and we're going to hit this. Okay. And what we're looking to do is we're looking to get a nice solid color all the way across the banner. Okay. And once you get down here where the banner actually starts to hit um, the rest of the miniature, you need to be very, very careful. Okay. So if you have to, switch to a smaller brush if you need to to kind of get it because the and the thing is this banner comes all the way down here so you have to make sure that you get every single part of the banner okay and you're just going to color it nice and smooth okay and so what you're going to do is put as much on there as you can Okay, color as much of it as you can, because the next color that we're going to use will actually, you know, be a little bit different than this. Okay. And when I when I initially bought this figure, I thought, oh no, what did I do? But then I thought, no, this is good because I can kind of show hues and how um, different hues make a difference um, when you're doing this kind of a miniature. Okay. So in actuality, I colored that part, but that's okay. We'll, we'll be able to color that in a little bit. Maybe we're going to color the haft. Okay. So when we end up coloring the haft um, of the weapon there, he's it's gonna it's gonna settle right down. You're gonna see it. It's it's amazing. And um, and then once you get done, you're gonna go, wow! <laughs> I can't believe I actually did that. That is that is awesome. Now, once again, you don't have to do every single little teensy weensy bit of this 
miniature, okay? As you can kind of tell, that banner goes all the way back and hits his helmet. So I just colored back to the helmet and then brought forward, okay? To kind of draw the two colors together. Because the last thing you want to do when you're doing this kind of a miniature is create something that ends up looking like crud, okay? And what I'm talking about there is, is that you don't want this to look like, you know, you, you don't, you want to make sure that all of these colors stay very, very consistent throughout the whole process, okay? Now, certain parts of this, like the underside of the banner and stuff like that, you don't necessarily need to get all of those little tiny, like you don't necessarily need to get all the way back up in there and try to color, okay? Because you want to keep that shadow, all right? So, I'm, like, I'm just coloring the side of the banner, okay, and where it comes up to the haft of the weapon, but I'm not, like, there's a there's a small, right here next to the wing, there's a small part of the banner that goes around, and what I'm not trying to do is get underneath and back inside of that, because you're never going to be able to make it look good. It's going to look like crap, okay? And so, it, because it's going to destroy the illusion of the, of the depth that we're trying to get, okay? The shadow that we're trying to portray in this particular miniature, you want it to look a certain way, okay? And so, with that, ends the banner, okay? I'm almost out of time. So, let me break one more time, and I'll come back really, really fast, okay? And then I'll finish base coating this miniature, and I'll show you how it's going to look. So, I will be back in two seconds. And we're back. Okay, so, I kind of... Uh, rubbed off a little bit of the um, Caliban green down there at the bottom. So it's probably good to keep your paints close because we'll need to go back, grab this, because it, it's going to happen, okay? This is what touch-ups are for. <laughs> and so we're going to come back over here, and we're just going to cover that back up, okay? Just make sure that it's all nice and green, okay? Now. The last green color that we're going to use. And I'll show you one of the ways that I really use a lot of these paints. Um, because it's kind of the way that I've been doing it most of the time before I got this little palette here. <clears throat> Take this Hollyberry and I'm going to pull it up. Okay, I'm on. And then what I do is, I set the cap down in kind of a neutral location, because the cap has a nice amount of paint in it, okay? What I can do is, is I can just reach down into here, pull this up, and then we're going to color this streamer, these streamers right here, okay? And again, this paint is very thin, so we're going to need a couple coats. So we're going to color this. We're going to color these streamers, okay? And so I can see. And then when I'm done, I'll show you what it looks like. I wanted to make sure that I had enough light when I was doing this stuff um, so that you weren't out left out in the cold when you were trying to look at some of these things. You're like, no, I can't see. It's the last thing I want to do during a paint tutorial <laughs> is have people going, I can't see anything. <laughs> and then we're going to color this part of his um, head. 
address, I guess you could call it. Because what we're doing, again, we are creating the false shadows in there. Okay. And what we're doing, all we're doing, is we're just making a couple of these things kind of stand out just a tiny bit here and there so that you know when you when you look at it it's going to look a little different and then what we're going to do is when we get done with the shading which will be in the next um, episode we will then go back and highlight we will then shade we will highlight and we will get all of that stuff done now I'm going to have to do some touch-ups, which will be off-camera, but when I come back, I will show you how it works. So basically, we now have the back side of him done. And I know it's kind of hard to see because of the light, but um, here, I'll turn that off. There you go. See, we got that back side done. All right? Now... We're gonna come in with some gold, and I like this emperor's gold color, okay? So, just like we did with the red, I'm actually just gonna put a teensy dollop right there, okay? And now, I'm gonna take this brush, my small brush, okay? Just double checking, make sure it's got a nice point. We're going to pull that gold down and away. Okay? Down and away. Because we're going to get right up here and we're going to color the belly of this particular dragon. Okay? Because, in a lot of cases, Dragon bellies are gold. Now to add a little bit of a different variety, I might end up using a bit of a different color to um, paint up his uh, to paint up the little braid. I might use a different, a little bit of a different color, but that'll that'll come in. Okay. I'm gonna get that too. Now with this one, you don't have to be as particular with um, the folds on his belly. Okay. You don't have to be as particular with the folds on his belly. Okay, because the folds will end up being um, right there, and they will look. Um, they will they will look really well done when you get to that point, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is color the pommel of his, of his sword. Oops, gonna need to do a touch up of green right there, cause you can kinda see, I made a little happy accident on his, on his thing, that happens. Um, and then I also colored the side of his head. There's like a little little thing that his visor, probably the hinge that his visor has. Um, I colored that gold, so it's going to look pretty good. Let me make sure I got that nice and neat. This is going to end up being a pretty long video. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so basically, yeah, and then what I'm going to do is, um, I'm gonna put on the yeah. Before I put on the next part, I'm gonna color a couple things on him, and then when I come back, I'll kind of show you how it's looking. And I'll do some dry brushing, and then I'll do um, the the thing, but. Okay, so actually I'll just do it this way. 
I've got a few minutes. <laughs> it's going to be kind of a longish episode, only because it takes a while to kind of get this. And because I'm kind of switching back and forth between the two, I kind of have to, you know, like look at what I'm doing and how this is looking and how do I want it to look for this guy. And, you know, what do I want this to look like for these different guys Sometimes when I'm when I'm quieter, I'm concentrating because I'm trying to get that particular part done. And a lot of times it helps if I just kind of be quiet while I concentrate. So sorry about that. No, it doesn't look like there is one up under there. There's a tiny bit of one. I can grab it right there. There we go. And one of the things that we can do is highlight that. And highlight that. Just like that. And if you want, you can even highlight a little bit. You just kind of grab and even highlight the uh, knobs or rivets in his armor. You don't want too much because you can absolutely dominate color something like that then I think I will do that one go So as you can see, we kind of finished, and I've kind of put some different, you know, highlights on him. Okay, and that's what you're looking for. Now, what I think I'm also going to do is, since he's a little bit of a vain vampire, I'm going to color the hilt of his sword, or actually the haft of his sword, in gold. We really got it out, might as well go ahead, right? Again, this is your world. You can make them how you want. Nothing says you have to do it exactly like it is in the books. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. And, um, you know, once we do some of the highlighting and we get some of the things. Now, he's got his knee pads down here. If you want, just to kind of add a little bit of variety, okay, you can take a little bit of gold and you can color one of these. In gold and that way it kind of gives you a little bit of separation from the norm okay so it's however you want to do it and so I think that's probably good for him we'll leave him for there now one last thing I want to do before we go um, and then like I said I will finish base coating a lot of different things actually there's two things I can do one I'm gonna do the haft of this guy's weapon just to kind of show you how that works and then I'm going to do the cloak. But I'm going to do the cloak in a little bit different way. Okay? Because I have a really good blue color that I love to use. But I need to have a gray kind of overcoat. So I'm going to have to... Um, actually, before I do that, let me do this. Go ahead and color that so it can dry while we're standing here talking. So I'm going to take this Anita's gray. It's kind of a neutral gray. It's... Um, it's a little bit lighter in tone. Let me drop a 
couple of them in there. There we go. Um, because what we're going to do with the cloak here, similar to how we um, did it, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. Um, you just kind of want to cover this black because the color that I'm going to use is extremely dark. And if I put it over, over a black, you will never see it. <laughs> okay. It's a really pretty blue, but you can't see it unless it's over more of a neutral color. So we're just quickly going to, now you'll notice that on his cloak in certain parts, there's going to be some tatters, there's going to be some little holes. Make sure that you keep the holes, okay? We want the holes because the holes are going to give us artificial depth, okay? And in between, I'm going to kind of clean up the miniatures and I'll finish the base coats. And then when I come back, I'll kind of show you like, hey, here's the, here's the stuff. Um, because this blue that I want to do is very, very deep. But when it gets done, oh my Lanta, it is awesome. It is so cool looking when it gets done. Um, now... We don't necessarily also have to worry about the bottom of the cloak necessarily, okay? Um, and this this kind of paint dries fairly quickly, especially when you're spreading it this thin. Um, so it doesn't necessarily, like you won't necessarily need to hold on while it dries necessarily much, okay? But we do want to make sure that we are we are doing it in a certain way okay now we do kind of want to get up to the to the top okay because we don't want this part done we just want that part okay so you want to make sure that you're coming up to the top Because the blue that I'm going to use is going to make this cloak look artificially dark. And it's going to make it look so stellar. Especially when I get done dry brushing it with, um, with, the, uh, with the blue metallic. And like I said, we'll get into dry brushing in the next episode. But I think I have enough time to be able to get this done. Let it dry for a minute and then we'll finish getting it. Yeah, pretty much painted. Um, so the haft isn't going to take me very long. The haft of the weapon is extremely easy. And, um, like, really, the biggest thing that you kind of have to worry about is just making sure that you get in and around all the little parts. Okay? And if you get a little bit of the paint into the holes, it's not that big of a deal because, again, once we shade it and then we start to highlight it, it will pop. It, it you won't you won't even know that those holes were filled with with paint um, because that's part of the shading process. Okay, so just get this. Just get the finishing touches on it. Just trying to get this last little bit. There we go. And that just kind of brightens it up just a little bit. Okay. Now, normally, I mean, if I was doing this and I was going to be like, you know, showing it off and, you know, to, you know, 
somebody or, you know, if I was going to be doing this for like a professional thing, um, then I might take a little bit more time and maybe put on a second coat, kind of brighten up the gray a little bit. Um, but it doesn't necessarily need to be like 100% perfect. Okay. Now, sometimes you'll get some paint around the ferrule. All you have to do is just really get in there, really sop it, and then just kind of work the bristles around, and then there you go. So, I'm already shaking this paint, and it's not long enough that it's, you know, gone. What we're going to do... Right up there, I'm going to get this deep chocolatey brown. And this is the part where you want to be really careful, but we're going to get that nice dark, dark chocolatey brown right in there. And you'll notice that that's the separation, okay? So we're going to get a little bit more of this chocolatey brown in there. And you can kind of see now the weapon haft is starting to take shape. Okay. And when we get done with it, it is going to look dynamite. When you take some time, really get right up to the to the part of it that's um get up next to the next to the hilt you're gonna find that this puppy just sings okay people are going to be amazed because you take the time and that's really the biggest thing that I can say about painting any miniature is don't rush it when you if you have to speed paint okay the best way to do it is kind of like I have it arrayed right here you have all of your figures arrayed and you're going to paint them and you're going to, you know, you're going to use all the different colors, do all the different stuff. But you're going to want to make sure that you get nice and neat right up into the sides, okay? Now, that I've kind of shown you how to do the haft of the weapon, okay, let me... Because you're, you know, for like the bottom, you're going to want to make sure that you're nice and neat all the way around. Okay? Now, let me just do this really fast because I want to make sure that you guys get to see this because the effect is amazing. And then when I get done, I'll kind of go back and I'll do some different colors and I'll do some different things and then I'll show you what I've done. Because it's going to take way too long for me to do this whole entire thing. Uh, this is ultramarine blue. This blue, if you put it against the black background, it is dark as hell. As you can kind of see, it's a very dark-ish paint. What we are going to do is we're going to paint this cloak with it, okay? Because this cloak has nice folds and everything. What this is going to do, this is actually going to help us when we get into these little deep recesses, okay, of the cloak. So we're going to take a nice dollop of the paint and we're going to put it on. And you're probably going to need a couple coats of this, okay, because it is a very, very, very thin paint, as you can see. Yeah, okay? you can see the gray through it. So you're probably going to need a couple coats to get it nice and deep. But it will be worth it in the end when you get to the shading part of it, okay? It is going to look amazing. Because I've done it on a few different characters. I've done it on a few different things. And I've, I've done this color a hundred times, and I'm not joking. I've done this color a hundred times, and until I started putting it under a light background, um, 
it didn't work at all. And so the best thing that I can say is if you're going to use a paint like this, okay, that you want to make sure that you get all of the little gray parts covered, okay? Because when we get to the when we get to the end, this paint is going to look amazing. Okay, it is going to be such a deep, rich blue that you're gonna you're gonna go, oh wow, does that look amazing? Okay, because again, it doesn't look amazing right now because the gray is kind of showing through in certain parts, and it's not going to be until I put the second coat on that it's going to look amazing. But once it once it goes on, wow, does it ever look freaking awesome. Okay. And so what's going to end up happening is is that we're going to put kind of a uh, we're going to put kind of a dark blue shade on it. Okay, and we're going to kind of put it in a little heavy in places because we want deep shadow. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to highlight back up to this color. Okay, we want this color, we, we want to kind of build a gradual highlight with this color, and we're going to do that. Um, probably another couple episodes from now because we're going to have to wait till these dry and then I'm going to have to go back and, um, you know, get the second coat on them. So I have to kind of, you know, do it as I have it. So I'm just kind of showing it off right now that, yeah, this blue is going to be absolutely amazing. I mean, look at that. Just, just. Not even, I mean, you know, yeah, the gray's still showing through in places, but look at that blue. Is that blue not awesome? That blue is flipping crazy looking, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here. But don't you worry. We're going to be coming back really soon, okay? I have been Russ, for Russ Plays Games. <clears throat> and I want you <clears throat> to smash that like button, hit subscribe, Drop a comment. Let me know. What do you think of the painting so far? I'm trying to do this. I might actually move these paints over here and maybe put up a little background right here so that, you know, I can put this on this side so that the light will kind of shine down here and I might have a little bit better way of showing you some of these different things. Because, uh, I mean, as I was kind of painting and stuff, I kind of took off this guy's little green there so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to paint that back up but anyway this has been Russ plays games my name is Russ again smash that like button hit subscribe drop a comment let me know what you think um, I got a pretty good comment on the first uh, episode and um, a guy was like I never knew that about the stabbing um, on this guy's uh, chain mail down here so um, when we come back I'm gonna do some dry brushing techniques I'm gonna do some shading techniques and I'm gonna kind of show you how some of that stuff looks, okay? And then after that, once we get done with that, then I'll probably go into the highlighting a little bit more um, and kind of show you how to build up the highlights and show you how to do things. And then in the final one, we'll kind of do some bases and I'll get to show you some of that stuff. So keep it locked here for Russ Plays Games and I will see you later.